Misha in Toronto, Canada. He writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, I've been told that the key to properly driving low impedance, low sensitivity planar magnetics is to ensure that you're providing them with enough current. I think that sounds reasonable. Alternatively, I've been told that the amplifiers need to swing enough voltage, yet nobody seems to be able to quantify this in any way that makes sense to me. I've been told to ensure amplifiers have robust enough power supplies or to find an amp where the wattage doubles when going from 8 to 4. I've also been told to find something with as low an output impedance as possible, but anything south of an OTL tube amp should have suitably low impedance. Is there a way to supply more current into a given load? Is there a way to measure it? Whew. Well, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> it's so easy to get confused, and I'm going to do my best to try and untangle some of this for us. The important part, the most important part of the relationship between a power amplifier and a speaker is voltage. Okay, so the power amplifier has to output a certain amount of voltage in order for the speaker to start moving back and forth and make sound. More voltage, more sound. It's as simple as that. End of story. Now, I'm not going to say see you tomorrow. Okay, because people say, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what do you mean? Nobody talks about voltage. Everybody talks about wattage. And I'm going to see if I can't do this in a very simple way that, that kind of makes sense. So for the moment, trust me, what you need out of an amplifier is voltage. Okay? Same thing that comes out of a preamp, voltage. Power amp, voltage, big voltage, right? 50, 60 volts sometimes, 30 volts, 40 volts, lots of volts. It's the volts that drives the speaker. It's the voltage that energizes the coil in a woofer or the coil in a planar magnetic to make it move against the permanent magnet. That's all voltage. Okay, I think you got that. Now, the problem is in order to generate a voltage across a low impedance, and by low impedance I mean a speaker, Let's just say it's a 4 ohm speaker. To generate the voltage that we need across a low impedance, like 4 ohms, we need current. So if I took the output of a preamp, and let's say it's moving 1 volt, okay, not a lot. And if I stuck a 4 ohm load, if I tried to put the output of that preamp, that has an output of impedance of say 100 ohms and I put that into the binding post of a speaker, that one volt would collapse and I wouldn't have that voltage there anymore. And the reason I wouldn't have that there is because I don't have enough current and that's why I need a power amplifier. So when we look at a power amplifier, we have two sections to it. A voltage amplification stage. It takes the one volt or so from the preamp and it jumps it up to 30 or 40 volts that we need for the output. Now if we took that voltage gain stage and put it directly into a speaker, it too would collapse and you couldn't generate that voltage that we need. So on top of the voltage gain stage we add a current gain stage. So whatever voltage goes in all of a sudden has a lot of current, a lot of power, a lot of juice to deliver that voltage to the speaker. And that is where we get watts. So it's a simple formula. Amps, which is a measure of current, times voltage, which is a measure of this pressure that we need to make it work, equals watts. Amps times volts equals watts. Okay. So 2 amps times 20 volts is 40, 40 watts. 2 times 20? Yeah. Not a math wizard. Never said. Okay. So, and, you know, and 200, well, you need 
you either need more voltage or, but it is a combination of voltage and current that makes all that work. But the important part is voltage, okay? And the lower the impedance of the amplifier, well, that's just, that's a good thing because that means that we're going to get steady voltage into a, a changing low impedance load, which is why we say an amp should double its 4 ohm power. Why? Because if you have uh, an 8 ohm speaker and an 8 ohm amplifier that can't do that, if the speaker were to drop down in impedance at certain frequencies, the amplifier, if it's not able to keep up with that, its voltage is going to drop. And when the voltage drops, we get less sound at the output of the speaker. That make sense? Lose voltage, lose sound. A certain voltage that comes out because we have a certain amount of current that helps that stay there. If the impedance, the load, you know, it's like a car trying to go up a hill. As the hill increases, you got to put more juice into it so that, that the speed, which is our voltage, remains constant. Because if your car starts going up the hill and you don't have enough power to keep that voltage speed constant, what happens? Yeah, car slows down. And the speaker, sound goes down. So if we can maintain that voltage, irrespective of the impedance going up and down, bingo, you got it, okay? Bing, bada, boom. All right, sorry that was so long. I, 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 I know people struggle with this and I'm gonna do my damnedest to, to, to help you figure this out because it's simple. It's never simple. It really is never simple. So it's only simple when you finally get it. Then you go, oh, that's simple. <laughs> All right, thanks for the question. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take it easy. Thank you.